Welcome, John. My name is Rebecca Nichols, and I'll be the moderator. Let's start from the beginning. John, where were you born? Uh, born in Minnesota, a little wow. town right outside Minneapolis. Uh, what were your parents' names? The, what? Your I'm, parents' names. Oh, uh, Jim and Millie. Great. Exworthy. Exworthy. You have any yeah. brothers and sisters? Yeah, but four sisters, no brothers. Really? Yeah. Wow. What are, did you know their names? Uh, Janice and Mary, Maureen and Jill. Wonderful. Um, so what, you're from Minnesota, when did you come to California? Well, um, the, the day I graduated, I joined the Navy. That was back when you had a draft. And sure. I thought I'd let them pay for the school, so you know, it was either draft, so I joined the Navy and uh, I went to boot camp, spent two and a half years in the, Overseas and wow. on when that was happening, got back here, was discharged here in San Francisco in 1967. But I've been living here. I had an apartment for like six months. Wow! And I loved it. I loved the city, San Francisco. I didn't want to go anywhere. Right. <laughs> in the, <laughs> the summer of '67, what else would you expect? That's wonderful. That's the best place to be. So where was this apartment? Uh, our first one when I was still in the Navy was uh, down on Turk Street. Uh -huh. Turk and, uh, I don't know, close down to sure. Compton's and Tenderloin. Sure. Charming little place. Sure. But you spent most of your time in, in the Haight-Ashbury. Yeah. In yeah. The park. Well, we went to this, this, this girl next door came over and said there was this great little party going to be down uh, at the Longshoreman's Hall. And uh, I should go to that, and I thought, Longshoremen, they're like sailors, we'll get along great. So I went down there, and it was, it was a little strange. There was this band, I didn't like the name Grateful Dead, they were playing there, and they had, <laughs> they had this punch. <laughs> and anyway, the rest is history. Yeah, yeah the long story totally. short, we had a good time. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so uh, at, at this time you were out of the service? Uh, no, I was right on the brink of getting discharged in July of 67. Mm -hmm. And uh, the same girl was saying, hey, you got to come down into Hate Street. Now, what a terrible name for a street. And they, sure. oh, you got to see the beatniks are all wearing colors down there. Oh, really? <laughs> so I went down and, uh, yeah. So I, we were used to going down to North Beach. We were singing folk songs at, on sure. amateur nights at all the clubs on the eye. Coffee and Confusion and all that. This friend of mine played a beautiful 12-string with song where you sang folk songs. Sure. A lot and, of... But all the beatniks were dressed in black, you know. It was North... <laughs> they, things were happening in North Beach before they were on H Street. Yeah, but they were all beatniks. They were all dressed in black. They snapped their fingers instead. It was all about coffee, red wine, and being depressed. And all of a sudden... They smoked some of that ganja. Um, well, they, they may very well have. And the difference yes. was LSD came in. No, 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 that wasn't happening down there. That was all. I mean, in the hate The beatniks, room. yeah, the beatniks that wear colors. <laughs> yeah. They didn't have a name for them then, but right. they were beatniks that all of a sudden started wearing kaleidoscope outfits. And they were hip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great Hip fun. Hipsters. A lot of fun. Yeah. Well, you know, we had the diggers, we were going around salvaging. So you finally made it to H Street. Oh, yeah. yeah. Were, you, were, were you blown away by what you saw? Yeah, that was just, you know, it was really fun. We worked with the diggers collecting food, feeding people on the streets, the rents were real low. Sure. And uh, we had a school bus, we'd fill it up with people, go to geysers. Get water, uh, take bit, swim in the in the creeks, and, <laughs> yeah. and all of that. So there was a lot of music happening. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of music happening, but yeah. it was all local bands, you know, Jefferson Airplane, Grateful Dead, the San Francisco Jimi Sound, Hendrix, those right. kind of local bands, right? Jazz. <laughs> you know. It was just the kids from the neighborhood. Exactly. They get up and jam. Janis is really good at that. Try to tell that to people. They don't. <laughs> you get it, even though you you tell it, you had to be there. And uh, did yeah. you did you pick up at all? Was your hair short at this time? Uh, no, you? when I got out of the navy, I said I would never cut it again. You just let it grow. Yeah, and so, I, so was I everybody haven't else. cut it since. It's been uh, weeks. Weeks <laughs> <laughs> since nineteen sixty-seven. So you started to um, 
see so many young people coming from everywhere, people looking for a better world. Yeah, um, it turned into a real scene, yeah. And uh, I don't know, it, was, it just had a lot of charisma. It's like, well, it's like I say, you know, uh, it was such a good idea. Everybody was so happy about doing it that way that it created some kind of a, a, an atmosphere. And uh, it's like I say, well, the Beatles came over to see what was going on. And uh, I believe we changed the Beatles and the Beatles changed the world. It's never been the same since. Exactly. No, I think that's true. I think there's some insight there. It's so true. Um, there was a lot of music, there was a lot of art, there was a lot of writing. Uh, there was a lot of people believing they could make change now. They could... Yeah, yeah, we were really optimistic. We were saying, you know, you know all these people around had got to be snowballing. There was more and more people involved and it started spreading from city to city, you know, like almost like spontaneous combustion. Sure. Of some kind, but it was traveling, you know. People said, you know, it was the hate, but People from here, after a while, people just lived in five to six different cities all at the same time. Right. And they traveled back and forth and spread the word, so it, sure. it turned into like a prairie fire. It's an interesting time. In, in New York, things were happening. In England, things were happening. In Madison, and Wisconsin, things were happening. All was, over the place. Plus, yeah. there was an influx of young people from all over the world to this area. Um, all feeling they could make a difference and there could be peace in their time. Yeah, yeah. You know, but did you get carried away with this feeling? Did you feel... Oh, you yeah. You woke up in the morning gonna... passionate about the day and always wonderful well, about... it depends on what time it was because it went in a progression. You know, like if you have really great parties, everybody shows up at the end of the night, there's always those 10 or 12 who are... Just a little bit <laughs> sure. different than the rest, still looking sure. for the party, still looking. So, you know, and we had millions of people come out to visit. Totally. And uh, so it got to be a little hectic towards the so end. So, about, like, about how old were you here? 67, 68, Well, I was, uh, yeah, I moved to the Hague when I was 21, the day I was 21. Uh, I uh, got out of the Navy and... Uh, Stop cutting my hair, so... <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I think they wrote a song about that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> <You know. coughs> and where did you live when you moved here to the... Uh, the uh, best place was up on uh, Frederick Street at uh, uh, Casa de Madrone. Right. Like, right there on the corner. It turned yes. into a big commune of all friends and people like that. So a lot of people lived there. At yeah. The time. Um, so what was your daily, when you moved here, what was your day like? Um, you're very artistic, John. And, yeah, uh, well... I know, I know through the years later myself how artistic you are. Collage work, uh, painting, uh, uh, on every level. The flags and drops and all kinds of things. You've contributed so much to the scene. I'm wondering back then, in the early years, were you artistic at all? Uh, yeah, I started going to art school when I was eight years old. Okay. And uh, I used to go all during the later part of uh, grade school, high school, to uh, the Minneapolis School of Art. Uh -huh. And uh, it started on weekends, and then I'd go to weekdays, and uh, took all these classes. Uh, I really liked art, so uh, I have been at 12 years of art school. I went to City College here, and... But it's never to... been out of my mind. At one point, you know, when I was really young, I said, well, if I'm going to be an artist, I have to support myself with an art. And I'll do anything as long as I can uh, finagle that into looking like it's artwork. Exactly. <laughs> and that's been my motivating force. Oh, this time, yes. Able to overcome the ADD with that motivation. Okay, that's right. <laughs> oh, many great people have. Let's just put it that way. Um, so... Back at, back during this period, do you remember any places like this? Have you had you remembered a place called the Straight Theater? Oh yeah, I used to go, go there, there all the time. I love that on the weekends they turn the projectors, they put them out on the roof and show movies on the uh, sides of the buildings, and uh, and it wasn't just entertainment, the kind of stuff that they show. Like that was the first time I'd ever seen War of the Buttons. Wow. 
and uh, it's like the rascals meet politics. Right. A bunch of kids <laughs> learning right. about. Uh, and they used to show that at a regular rate because it would teach people in the community what politics is all about. And it was more than just entertainment. It was more than just 500 people laying in the street watching movies on the buildings. Totally. <laughs> and um, it was all about teaching. And of course, we had Alan Watts and uh, bunches of different people. When Tim Leary came out. Sure. And, um, St. Stephen. <laughs> a lot of they had the Magical Mystery Tour playing yeah, for the first time in America, I think. Um, and uh, like Alan Watts would have his little uh, lectures in the morning out at the beach. And um, it was all about expanding, growing, learning, stuff like that. Exactly. Making... Uh, you had people saving newspapers by the garbage pails and people thinking they were crazy because they didn't want to cut down the trees. And, and it, it took one person to make a change because now we got recycling. You know, yeah. it, it obviously kept you here a while. Uh, it, yeah, it, a lot of my friends moved out become of your, Become your family? Did you have, feel that there were people in the neighborhood? I mean, you, could, you woke up every day and when you went out, you knew you were going to see somebody you knew. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. A they're, they're all out there in the woodwork, but I liked it because it was it got a reputation for attracting a certain kind of person, and some people would move out and some people would move in, but if you've got the whole of the United States to choose who's going to live here, they choose themselves. They get up, they put all their stuff in a car, and they drive out here, and you get. They've been through a thousand sieves, a thousand screens and filters just to get here. Right. And they're, they end up being some of the best people sure. because of all that uh, free winnowing thinkers. out. That, free uh, thinkers. Yeah, creative, free thinkers. and people, uh, people wanting to make a better place. Yeah, people that are attracted to this reputation, how exactly. real or evasive that is, they're attracted to the reputation and it creates itself by having that rap reputation. So a lot of people move out, they move in, they're wonderful for a while, and some people get burnt out, some people get gobbled up. Where do you live right now? Uh, um, um, a block off um, Hate and a block off Masonic. So it's right by Buena Vista Park. By Buena Vista Park, and it's uh, Hate and Masonic, basically. Mm -hmm. And I think you brought a photo of yeah. your house. And this is, this is what the house we're now, looks like. We're now the end of May 2005. You've been there how many years? 19 years 19 now. years. Yeah. And we want to do a close-up. It's, it's in the White House. Can you see that? Yes. I did it. <laughs> yes. That's, been, that's home. That's yeah. home. And, yeah, uh, well, it's got some... You brought some stuff. I would love to go through some of this with you because I know each photo is a story. Um, you have some pictures on the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, uh, yeah. Tell me that story. Yeah. Well, we were trying to... Uh, I work with Greenpeace and Sierra, WW, and <coughs> conservative groups, and they've always... Greenpeace has always wanted to go up and fly Earth flag from the top of the Golden Gate Bridge. So I got up there, <laughs> and there, are, there was absolutely no wind. This is a flag that I used to take to uh, Grateful Dead shows to get people to think about, you know, we're all on one planet, you know? Sure. I think that photograph taken from space of Earthrise. Yes. It's probably the most powerful image that oh, was so created in my lifetime because it gets people to think, okay, it isn't divided up into little pastel odd shapes right. and dominated by uh, local uh, landlords, you might call them. Yeah. So anyway, I'm up there and fly this earth flag. It would not fly. Not a puff of wind. I was smoking a cigarette and the smoke would hang right there, 750 feet above the water. It you climbed move. all the way up there with this big flag. How big is well, the flag? I have, uh, the thing I invented, it's just a walking stick with a little bag on it and it turns into a 15 foot pole with a six by nine flag on it. But it all shrinks down, it's telescoping. So you'd think it was a walking stick. And uh, I didn't climb up, I got inside and took the elevator. Ah. It's a tiny little elevator, smaller than a phone booth, 
got four people mashed in there. They gave you took permission? took to the top of the South Tower. Did you have to get permission to do this? Yeah, a friend of mine got permission for it. Great. And uh, so the flag never, I smuggled my way did, in. Did it actually that. hang, but it never flew in the wind? It never flew in the wind. It just hung over the side. Like so that. maybe someday it could still happen. <laughs> you know, maybe someday it could still yeah, happen. Yeah, I used to, uh, I was pushing that One World Image for a long time. Uh, I did it for the uh, the ship, the Rainbow Warrior. Mm -hmm. What well, tell what is the Rainbow Warrior? Uh, it's the flagship for Greenpeace. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But I made a flag for them. They oh, like that's that. wonderful. And so they hired me to do. Uh, now let's do to one. Paint, uh, we'll look, paint on the side of the ship. Let's do one at a one at a time. We'll get a close up on that. We're painting. That. Uh, okay. Dolphins on the uh, on the side of the Rainbow Warrior. And I painted it that they wanted, so I put it on the side. Oh, let's see that. We'll just ship. fill a moment. We'll get that. Put another mud bowl on the side of the ship. That's great. We painted uh, dolphins up on the front. That's great. And uh, and I painted this orca on the back. This is supposed to be the fish equivalent of a lawyer. He's <laughs> smiling, but very dangerous, watching the back of the ship. <laughs> Uh, there we are the day we had it dedicated. Wow. We had different holy people uh, from all over the Bay Area. Yamata-san, who was a Buddhist monk, uh, a Native American, um, Starhawk came out. It had every different kind of religion that we could think of come out and do a blessing ceremony wow. when we painted in the eyes on the... Uh, Wonderful. ...on the ship. Let's see. There's what the ship looks like. Oh. The whole ship. A really a beautiful ship. That's we beautiful. went out went out on the bay when they were taking pictures of it. I never got any of the pictures, but they uh, we went out underneath the Golden Gate Bridge and rode through some heavy weights. It's just a really beautiful ship. Beautiful man. ship. Yeah, we well, had Christmas dinner with them. I mean over and over again I see you, John, doing stuff that with what talent you've been given to help others get their message across for change. Um, that's a, that's a, great, a great gift. Um, you have, uh, you had had this vision of, uh, of the world that you had mentioned was one of the greatest images. Uh -huh. You have uh, <coughs> some artwork you were doing on the ground of a giant world. Oh yeah, I did, uh, this is the largest chalk drawing. <laughs> That was uh, <laughs> in Golden Gate Park. They had a chalk drawing invitational, and everyone could come out and draw chalk. And so I thought that was the biggest a, one, the largest drawing of the earth. Uh, in chalk. <laughs> yeah, and it's in and Golden Gate Park. It was really interesting. They had, we had had to put up a ten thousand dollar bond just to draw on the sidewalks there. And uh, because they were afraid, you know, and, you know, ten thousand dollars to clean it up after it's gone, sure. we had to uh, sign a paper saying we'd wash them all off when we got done. And they came down. They liked them so much that they left them. Some of the artists that came were just beautiful. So other people could. It's right in front of the band show. Wonderful. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of people involved with it. That's wonderful. That's great. <coughs> then there's a photo of you. You you make kites as well, and uh, you have something yeah, I mean, very to the kite. Called the uh, Phoenix. Yeah, it's for flying that? indoors. Well, the Phoenix, of course, is the symbol of San Francisco, and it's my own personal uh, totem, because the Phoenix is born of fire, born of its own ashes. Uh, I get a lot of fires going on around me, <laughs> but wasn't for that born again part, I think I'd get discouraged. <laughs> but it's also the symbol of San Francisco. So right. I made this oh. thing on a, a telescoping pole. Now this will all fold up into a little tiny bag and uh, with a walking stick. That's what it looks like, a long red bag with a walking stick. That's at stick. the band show in the park. Yeah, this is the band show. I was flying it down there one day for this uh, Swedish prince or something. Had a bunch of people come over from Sweden. They still have royalty over there. And uh, we put on, uh, put on an event and I flew it for them. So. So that, to get that of this, uh, take back to Phoenix has been used in very many. I use it for everything. For many, many things. I, I won. <laughs> it led the parades. I won, 
I won some kind of award dead. in the Berkeley Earth Day for having uh, the most interesting non-motorized float. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it was the lead... Uh, and sometimes the tail at New Orleans by the Bay. At yeah, Shanghai. well, yeah, grateful, for sure. Every Chinese New Dead. Year since '87, you know, at uh, for the Grateful Dead, and uh, super. That's wonderful. And that's me in this costume that I, and, I and come up with. We have never early said I clown. should have a costume. What is it called? Uh, Koshari. I'd love to. You have a few photos. There's an yeah, early one. It's what it is. Is the uh, what Wavy says, you gotta have a clown, you know, you gotta have an outfit, you won't get beat up so bad if you're a clown. I thought, well, this is a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to pick a clown costume, and I'm already clumsy, I don't need the big shoes to try to kill me. Sure. So I was wondering about it, and I found this is the oldest clown in America. If you go down to the Hopi Indians, maybe even the Anastasi, in uh, four corners of area of the southwest, this clown has been around for thousands of years. So it's the oldest clown in America. It's the Koshari. And they paint their body with black and white stripes to symbolize the days. And they have uh, little uh, sprouts coming out of their heads. So right. I made it, you know, I took a jumpsuit and striped it. It was a lot easier than <laughs> painting my body. But a lot of these projects you work on, you invite a lot of your friends and the extended community to come join in. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had, <laughs> I even got a picture of This was at a, a Grateful Dead show at the Warfield, and this is, we had a gang of Kosharis. All we have to do is bring something white, we'll stripe it up, and you can join in the fun. That's Their great. job is to show up in the Southwest, the original Kosharis, their job is to show up at the general dance and do everything wrong. <laughs> their job is to do everything wrong, and I thought, I can do that. <laughs> how can you know? How can you do anything wrong if that's your job no. to do something wrong? So you're doing your job, and, and even if by accident you do something right, well, that's wrong. It's against the rules, so you win no matter what you do. That's wonderful. <laughs> they have some terrible and disgusting habits at the general dance. They're a little, they're a little more outrageous than we are. Well, you've lived in your house 19 years here. It, it, obviously, this has become your home. Now, why do you live in the Haight Ashbury? I mean, you've been here since I the love 60s. It. Well, and why do you, why do you, why do you on tape, as people who don't know the Haight Ashbury have never been here, why are you a member of this because community? Because of the reputation draws a special kind of person. It's not everybody that moves out here. You know, you get the good with the bad, but you get such a high percentage of interesting, wonderful, talented, charming, I mean, the creative. You know, they're, they're, you know, they can go, if somebody is living in Priest River, Idaho, they can go anywhere in the world. That kind of special person that's drawn to the Haight-Ashbury in San Francisco. You know, the person, the kind of person that's drawn to San Francisco is the one right. that I find, you know, very pleasant and easy to deal with. And then wanting to live in the Haight-Ashbury even makes them more special. So you get a real high percentage of the best people in the world. Right. And, Artists, performers. Yeah. And plus, I have a big flat. It's got four bedrooms. I was raised with four sisters. I always have female roommates, so I have like I have three female roommates now, and they're all the the smartest, the, the most beautiful, talented. It just you know the percentage That's, is real high. I can so see why you're part of this community, <laughs> and I, well, I and, love and, and you contribute so much. Real quickly, because we don't have a whole lot more time, I'd love to see some photos of some more of your work. That um, oh well, because you're quite a, you're painting. quite an artist and. Uh, Contributed so many different ways, not only yeah, well, these. this this flag that I invented. Yes, now this is a picture of the summer of love. We did this wonderful prank with uh, Wavy Gravy, he was up on stage, <laughs> and, and people I had this woman come from backstage with her tool belt, microphone, hat you know, that old kit. Thing. Uh, waving. There's a guy out here who's waving his earth flag and he's in the way. We've got a lot of people shooting today. It's a video moment. It's film. 
We had him put down the flag and wave it going, no, no, I like the earth flag. We're going to leave that up. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else would go on and on. Oh, anybody else agree with me? And another flag would come up here, and another flag would come up there, and pretty soon we just filled the sky with these flags because it's just like a little walking stick with a bag. Sure. And so every cliche logo since the '60s was on the flags. We had, you know, the little Ricky Ticky Daisy, the peace sign, women's power, black power, all of the different that things war. that yes. happened. We had like forty different flags. Wow, amazing. And. Uh, that's partly what it looks like. And then the Phoenix came out, and they would put up a giant earth flag. Wow. A real tall pole right in the middle of the way we had such a good time. Let's see a few and more then, photos. I would love yeah, to see Yeah, the pink in. Tonkas. This is a picture of what I call a honky tonka. It's uh, the Tibetan goddess, green taron, goddess of compassion. You painted that. Well, That's I painted, this is a liner for a friend of mine's Volkswagen. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bob on a recliner. Right. The Kush of the Gods. That's wonderful. Uh, this is a, a design that I made for the Haight-Ashbury Free Clinic. I helped That's them great. start. What year was this one? All right, their uh, this was in... Uh, 80s? Or? Uh, 94, something 94. like that. But when they first started out, Yes. And Dr. David was doing it. I was doing all things. You know, I'm kind of like a background of that. Sure. That's David Smith, yes. Yeah. And uh, helping them start the Hate Asbury Free Clinic and right. pushing it over the years, helping them raise money and different things like that, doing their decorating. Rock Med at the shows. Uh, very worthwhile organization. Yeah, this is a. <laughs> very unique to the Hate Ashbury as well. Yeah, there's, and I take What's things. This one I take now? found art and make them into other things. This sure. is a no hitchhiking sign from Wyoming. <laughs> and I pull over to the highway and I thought this would be a no oppression. Yeah. <laughs> no, so you turn it upside down. <laughs> That's the trick. <laughs> it used to be. That this way, way. Right. but if you turn it upside down, a little black stripe, that means no oppression. No oppression. <laughs> this is one just when uh, Waver Gravy uh, was up at uh, Laytonville for Earth Dance, mm -hmm. yes. and uh, Mickey Hart broke the record for largest Four drum circle. This was the drum drums. that I made for Waver Gravy. He's got all his friends beating his drum around the side, and that's him with his amazing face. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, this will give you an idea of the size. It's just a little hand drum, but it's got all of his friends around the outside. It's got Jerry, who's probably pumped more into his amazing life. Right. At the top, but it's even got Bill Graham down there giving you the finger. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I mean, you've worked so many events and probably and done art. Found, yeah, you worked with Bill Graham, you worked with Chet Helms, you worked uh, supporting many people who tried to uh, give people a great experience to to lift them from whatever wherever they are. Yeah, I'm music a real hate and, street booster. I think you know, music this... and art can uh, can raise awareness. We have about two minutes left, uh -huh. and we will be calling you back, but I wanted to ask you if you could capture one moment in your life, one moment, real quickly. Share one moment. Uh, just that moment between 19, you know, 66 and now, that, that little... That little moment. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you could put one word to a young person that would see this tape in 50 years, what would you say? In 50 years? 50 years, this is tape is being archived. God, I'm really sorry about George Bush. I didn't <laughs> know that he was going to do that. <laughs> That's, if I would have known that, I would have campaigned a lot harder. <laughs> but... Yeah. Um, I want to. I want to thank you so much. Um, and the true spirit of the Koshari. How do you say it? the clown? The Koshari. Koshari. Yes. We end with a true laugh. And uh, I want to thank you so much for being a member of this community and sharing with you a pinch of your life because I know there's so much that more. They would let me live here. That's the first thing that dawned on me in 1966, and I saw a crazy person on the street, and I was thinking, like, in Minnesota, they'd lock that person up. Right. <laughs> and, the, and the cab driver was just shocked. He said, what? She's not hurting anybody. She's just crazy. And I went, this is my mom. <laughs> <laughs>